breaking right now, Father Calvin Robinson has declared Tommy Robinson a political prisoner. After the journalist and activist appeared in court via video link from Woodhill Prison under the Terrorism Act for refusing to give police access into his phone. So we've got the latest now from Tommy's team on X, who say, It must be noted that, first of all, it is an abuse of power arresting him under the Terrorism Act. Tommy has never been and never will be a terrorist. Secondly, Tommy has journalistic sources on his phone, which include survivors of child exploitation. Thirdly, he also has lawyer-client privileged information on his phone. So, Father Calvin Robinson, I want to break this down in some detail. Can you outline to me the case as to why you believe Tommy Robinson can now be classified as a political prisoner in the UK. Absolutely. So our, political, our judicial system is that we are innocent until proven guilty. So it's upon the opposing side to prove that you are guilty of a crime. It's not up to you to prove that you are innocent. And so when they say, I want to see your phone, you do not have to give them your phone. When they say, I want a pin code to your phone, you don't have to give them the pin code to your phone because that would be incriminating yourself. So it's on them to find evidence that can, they can prove your guilt. It's not up, up to you to provide evidence on, on the contrary. And, and then they're using the Terrorist Act to do this. The Terrorist Act was brought in to prevent terrorism in this United Kingdom, in the United Kingdom. Now, Tommy has not been accused of terrorism. He's not been arrested for terrorism. He's not been charged for terrorism. So for them to use the Terrorist Act to gain access to his personal information, to gain access to his phone, is a clear abuse of power. They're not giving him due process. Therefore, they're not giving him justice. And this is political persecution. So they don't like what he did. He's been arrested and found guilty and charged for contempt of court. And this is because the court said you're not allowed to publish certain information. And he went ahead and published it anyway. They didn't say this information is untrue. They didn't say this information is false, misinformation, disinformation. They said you're not allowed to publish this information. Now, he did publish it. It turned out to be true. It doesn't matter. He went against the court. He admitted that. You know, people often say, well, Tommy Rowan's, he pleaded guilty. So, of course, he's, yeah, he pleaded guilty to, to publishing his documentary. Yes, he did publish his documentary. But it shouldn't be a crime to publish a documentary. We should have free speech. We should have freedom of press. As a journalist, he put out information that the government, the local government, the police, and the teachers in the school that were involved in this particular incident were covering up. It's proven that they were covering uh, it up. It's proven there were non-disclosure agreements. There were cash settlements paid out. He, Tommy Robinson has kept all the receipts. Does not matter. The truth is not what's important here. It's the process. And the, when the court says you're not allowed to do something and you do it, you're arrested for it. So now he's been arrested for journalism, and they're trying to figure out who else is involved, who are his sources, how do you find out all this information. So they want access to his mobile phone. And he said no, rightly so, as a journalist, independent journalist. He has many sources, as pointed out by his team. Some of them are survivors of CSE, child sexual exploitation. You know, this is very serious. These people do not want their information out there in the public. And it will become public information if it's held by the courts, because that's how our court system works. And so Tommy Robertson is protecting his sources, he's protecting his innocence and, and, and not having to provide um, you know, evidence that could incriminate himself. And he's in the right. The courts, the police, the government are in the wrong in this because they hate him, they don't like him, they call him a far-right extremist. Now it seems they're calling him a terrorist. For doing what? For highlighting problems that they have caused in the first place. This issue all began really and truly with the Pakistani Muslim grooming gangs, as they're called, or as I call them, rape gangs, because that's what they do. They rape young British girls, and they've been getting away with it because it's systemic. The local taxi firms, the kebab shops, the local police, the councillors are up to the national governments, uh, both Conservative and Labour and Lib Dem, have covered it up consecutively for the last couple of decades. And people are still getting away with it today. Some people have been sent to prison, thankfully, uh, in, very recently. But people are still getting away with this child sexual exploitation today. Tommy Robinson was one of the first people to call it out. And they hated it, him for it because he exposed them for the evil that they are complicit in. Because they don't want to rock the boat. They don't want to disturb their idol of diversity, inclusion, and equality. And they see 
a race riot in our future. I don't think that this country is racist, but they think if we find out the truth of what's going on, we will be racist and we'll have a race riot. And that's insulting on our intelligence and on our compassion as British people. So the government, the establishment, the judiciary, and the mainstream media, and the police, they are all at fault. Tommy Robinson is innocent. He is a political prisoner. Okay, lots to unpick there. I think the first thing we need to talk about is the journalism thing, because I have strong views on this. As a journalist, it is utterly essential that you are prepared to go to jail to protect your sources. And that has always been my approach, Calvin, and I've been in this position. I have been in positions where People, including Prince Harry, have tried to get me to reveal sources, and I've been very, very clear that I would go to jail. So Tommy is absolutely doing the right thing there. Sources need to know when they speak to a journalist that they are protected, especially if they are blowing the whistle on really important cover-ups. But it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're a whistleblower or if you're a victim. Journalism is only a profession that has any credibility, and let's be honest, it's losing that credibility if sources are protected. And we've seen big corporates like Rupert Murdoch hand over their sources by the hundreds to protect themselves and protect their executives. And that is a shameful chapter in British journalism. So the first thing is, is Tommy Robinson is doing the right thing by protecting his sources. Now, the big problem from where I see it, Calvin, is that the authorities, the establishment, are desperate to try and prove that Tommy Robinson isn't a journalist. And again, this is what makes me so angry because it is the snobbery that we see in every part of British society about the white working classes. Because Tommy Robinson is working class, his journalism doesn't seem to count. Because he doesn't have a journalism degree, his journalism doesn't count. I'm sorry, just because you work in the mainstream media, that doesn't make you more of a journalist than a citizen journalist or a self-trained journalist. As long as you are publishing information that the authorities want to be kept secret. As far as I'm concerned, you're a journalist. And Tommy Robinson and Urban Scoop have done some brilliant journalism over the past few years. So I don't see, Calvin, how Tommy Robinson cannot be described as a journalist. But that is the big point that the establishment have made for some time. Because mark my words, we've seen the reaction in regards to Alison Pearson, for example, over the past couple of days. And I think that reaction has been incredible. But because she is an acceptable face in the mainstream media, people are prepared to speak up for her in a way they are not prepared to speak up for Tommy Robinson as a journalist. Absolutely fascinating, isn't it? Now, I've never ever called myself a journalist because I never see myself as a journalist. I'm a priest first and foremost, and then I commentate on things. And uh, I'm quite biased in my commentary, and I'm open about my biases. I expect a journalist to report on events and give the facts and let people make up their own minds, which is why I've never used that title. Now, Tommy Robinson does call himself a journalist, and I think it's actually undeniable. He's probably one of the biggest journalists in the country. His last documentary had over 50 million views. Now, that, they are numbers that Channel 4, ITV, BBC would dream of these <laughs> yes, things. very true. Right? So, but it's going to become a, more of a blurred yeah. line as we go forward. Which is why they're the terrified media, of them, though. Well, of course it is. The mainstream media is dead. It's not dying. It's now dead. And Elon Musk has proven this. And the elections in the US have proven this. When Rupert Murdoch's team and all the mainstream media teams are saying, Wait, how did people vote for Donald Trump? We've been telling them not to for so long. Maybe they're not listening to us anymore. Yeah, they're not, CNN and MSNBC. People are not listening to you anymore because people are the media now. So that line is being blurred because everyone can become an independent journalist. But but not everyone makes a living from it and not everyone's professional at it. Tom Robinson is a professional journalist making very professional output that is seen by millions of people all around the world. It's undeniable. If anyone to deny that, it's just insane. I agree. I I, I completely agree on that. Then you come to the terrorism side of things. Now, in America, Calvin, and this is why I genuinely believe we need true reform, and I'm not necessarily talking about Reform UK, the political party, although you know at the moment I believe they're the best vehicle for that, but who knows where we're going to be in five years' time. Maybe it will be Tommy Robinson leading a political movement. At the moment, he says that... Not something he wants, but who knows where we're going to be in five years' time, given what's happening to this country. 
But that is why I am so convinced we need a First Amendment. Because if Tommy Robinson was in the US and had released this film in the US, he would be completely protected by the First Amendment, which guarantees free speech. And it doesn't just guarantee free speech for journalists, by the way, Calvin. It guarantees free speech for whoever you are. And sure, you can sue someone. Of course, you can go through a court process. But the difference is if you're in America and you're a high-profile person, the view is that there is a higher bar in terms of what you can be sued over. Because the argument is you can come and defend yourself. If, if, if someone says something untrue about you, you have a platform. You can come and defend yourself. And what we are seeing in the UK is the courts and litigation, tourism, and uh, activist judges, let's be honest, they are activist hard left judges, genuinely now trying to shut down debate. And it frustrates me that we don't have at the absolute forefront of this political revolution, the need for a First Amendment, our own version of a First Amendment. Because if there was a First Amendment, Tommy Robinson would have been able to broadcast his film. He would not be in jail. It would solve many of these issues, Calvin. Not all of them, but a lot of yeah. them. Well, it's funny, isn't it? We're a, we're a top-down system, top-heavy system. The only people in the United Kingdom have, who have free speech enshrined in law is our politicians. They have parliamentary privilege. The rest of us do not have free speech. We have no free press. We have no free speech, no freedom of expression in the United Kingdom. The only people that do are the people at the top, the elite, the parliamentarians. That's disgusting. You know, for a long time, conservatives have been saying we don't need a written constitution in the UK because we have our, you know, we have our constitution that's unwritten. It's part of the culture. It's not good enough. We can't rely on it. We can't point to it. It's not tangible. We need a First Amendment. We need a Second Amendment. We need to have our rights enshrined because unless we do, the government runs roughshod over them, not just the government, but the judiciary, the police, the mainstream media, and, and therefore we are subservient to the elite. So we, yes, we're absolutely right. We need free speech enshrined in our law for every single citizen of the United Kingdom, and we need a free press so that people can publish information that the establishment doesn't necessarily want out there. This Axel Rudabiga case is a good example. I won't say anything because I can't. But there are lots of things that you and I, Dan, are not allowed or able to share with your viewers right now about the actual case, about the, the chap that killed three British girls, because they're saying, well, you'll be fined with contempt of court. You'll be arrested and put away. They are using this system against us. And the British people are the ones who pay the price. Of course. I mean, the idea that in America... Uh, you wouldn't be able to talk about one of the most high-profile cases is absolutely nonsense because, Calvin, it's also complete nonsense to say that a member of the jury enters uh, the court, and I'm not going to speak about a specific case, whether we're talking about Tommy Robinson or Ruda Cabana, but of course people enter knowing quite a lot about the case. So, so I don't believe that the rules are in place to guarantee fair trials. I believe the rules are in place to shut down discussion, to shut down debate, and we need to have quite an urgent look at the whole system. But Calvin, it was really interesting. I had uh, Alex Phillips on the show earlier this week. And I just want to play you a little bit of what she said. I recommend that people go and watch uh, the video in full after our discussion. But Alex Phillips has obviously been a member of uh, the Brexit Party. She was an MEP for the Brexit Party. She is part of the mainstream media. She was with GB News, still has her show on talk now. But the way that she talks about Tommy Robinson represents a real change, which I think might start spreading to other parts of, of the mainstream media too. In fairness, Alex is now a big independent voice. She has a substack. She's a very, very brave journalist. But I just want to play you just a little bit of what she had to say at the start of the clip for you to react to. And talking about him as a phenomenon and the people who supported him. So let me actually address the question, shall I, about what do I think of him? I think he's wonderful. Mm. I, I don't know, something really moved me when I interviewed him. Maybe he's some sort of huge fraud who's really good at pulling the wool over my eyes. No, 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 no. No, no. no because, because it's so interesting, Alex. Look at America. Look at these people in the independent media who I have so much respect for. Jordan Peterson, Ezra Levent, uh, you, you know, Anne Coulter. All of these people, Steve Bannon, all of these people talk about 
Tommy Robinson in the way that you talk about Tommy Robinson. The problem is we have worked in the mainstream media for such a long time where you know that if you even utter the word Tommy Robinson, you're probably going to be taken off air. So, of course, that's why you feel now like, oh, have I said something wrong? And so that was really interesting, wasn't it, from Alex Phillips, mm. Calvin? What did you make of uh, what she had to say? And she was emotional about it, too. First of all, I love Alex Phillips. I think she's fantastic. And uh, I, I agree with her entirely. You know, I did an interview with Tommy Robinson before the Jordan Peterson interview with Tommy Robinson. It's available on my YouTube channel, which is at Common Sense Crusade. It's not monetized because YouTube wouldn't allow it because they think he's an extremist. And it's on my personal YouTube rather than on my platform that I work for because they even said as much as they support him that they could put it up because it would affect their platform. This is how bad things have gotten. But when I sat down with Tommy, we had a two-hour conversation in that interview, and I had very similar feelings to what Alex Phillips has. I think he's wonderful. I think he's done a good job. I think he's fought the good fight for a long time and has been persecuted because of it. Is he a perfect person? No. Or really any of us? No. But is, is he what the mainstream media has painted him out to be over the last two decades? Absolutely not. And I think anyone that actually stops to listen to him, you know, I've had many people watch that interview and say, oh, I didn't realize that about him. Or, oh, he's just a normal person. Oh, actually, he cares. He's been fighting for us all this time. I thought he was a racist because the mainstream media told me he was a racist. But I can't think of anything he's ever said or done that's racist. It's like, this is the realization we all have to Kelvin, can I ask you finally about that specifically? You're obviously mixed race. Do you, and you've, you know, you've, been face to face with Tommy Robinson, you know Tommy Robinson. What do you say to people who say he's racist? Is is there anything racist about Tommy Robinson in your experience? So our relationship is no longer professional. I would call Tommy Robinson a friend. Now I wouldn't be friends with someone that I thought was racist. I wouldn't be friends with someone that I think hates me because of the color of my skin. Nor do I think a racist would want to be friends with me because I am a brown person. And someone who doesn't like brown people doesn't want to become friends with them. And I don't fall for this whole argument. Otherwise, the cargo and this and that. Like people who are racist want to avoid people of other races. That's the whole point of being a racist. And so the, old, the whole old argument of I'm not racist to have a black friend is actually a value valuable and valid argument because people who are racist don't tend to have black friends and yes i do count tom robinson in my small circle of friends amongst yourself indeed indeed calvin robinson really fascinating i i felt that deep dive was necessary because there's still a lot of misinformation out there well, i hate that term misinformation actually let's just say a lot of lies about tommy robinson yeah. and this case out there